That's going to do it for Q&A for the uh, September Game Talk. But we're not finished. We have games to talk about. And this month's games are Zelda-themed. So we picked uh, anything in and of related to The Legend of Zelda. Let's go ahead and kick things off with our guest, Damon. What game did you bring to the Zelda Game Talk? Uh, I picked the I picked Four Swords Adventures for GameCube. Tell me more. Kind of a, I think that's fair. Like, that's a spinoff, right? Fair. It's like, well, okay. What what I like about it, what's cool about it, is it's not like it's not. It doesn't have the format. It doesn't have the Zelda formula. Because at that time, we're talking GameCube. So like Ocarina Majora, Wind Waker, were the Zelda games at that time, and they all had the same layout. It was like open world. You can explore. You can interact with. But at the end of the day, it's pretty linear. Like it's just it's a it's story based. It's like very straightforward. But Four Swords Adventures is one of those kind of like older school style games where it's like story will run you through the whole thing in 15 seconds doesn't matter and then you just play the game but it's not an open world it's like you go from level to level and within each level you have an objective and you get a special item and you like explore this one little area you accomplish like some certain things and then you move on to another area so it doesn't have the format which is weird for that time and i think they knew like oh you know we got wind waker we're working on twilight princess and we can release just this little like side thing, and it won't matter if people don't like it. But it has the gimmick of the four links. You essentially have like three little clones of yourself, and you can kind of control all of them at once, sort of, by putting them in certain stances, or you can like separate from them and like I don't know, it's weird. You can like make them stand in a diamond pattern, or make them walk in a straight line, and use those different stances to solve puzzles and stuff. And it's a neat little game uh, because it was designed for multiplayer. So you'd need, you can play it on your own and just like switch the four guys up with your controller, or you can have friends that have Game Boy Advance SPs with link cables connected to your system who can then individually play as one of the other links. So it's interesting because it's like Triforce Heroes, but analog, which is like one of those Nintendo things where it's like, oh, they had this idea like back in the day and then later they figured out a more efficient way to (laughs) make it work. But it's a cool little game. I don't know if you guys have played I assume Teddy's probably played it. But. I have not played the GameCube one because of that stupid system with the link cable and the Game Boy Advance and uh, me it. not having all of that. The only one I've played is the one on the 3DS, the anniversary edition of the Four okay. Swords thing, which I assume is different. That's so I, I personally right. can't speak to it. Yeah, that's the, I have that one too, Teddy. I believe that's the GBA Four Swords game. Right, which you... To, yeah, because to play that, you had to be able to... To connect, yeah. But for four, four Swords Adventures, you don't need to be able to connect. You can play it on your own. If but you just have don't like... you have to have a Game Boy Advance to play it? No, I don't think so. If you play it by yourself, you can you can change the things around to like like you're saying. You can make everybody like go in certain formats. Yeah, to, yeah. To they have like achieve. There are a few different like field. formations you can have them stand in to to accomplish certain things. So you can play with a controller. Right. Yeah. Okay. Um, and it's. For me, I it's cool because it's like Triforce Heroes is neat, but in Triforce Heroes, I reached a point where the level of difficulty was too high if you're playing by yourself. It's just like not even feasible. I have that now. But Four Swords Adventures doesn't have that because you can like switch the stances and everything without needing friends, which is great. So it's like, I, I don't know. I was able to progress further in Four Swords Adventures playing it on my own, whereas in Triforce Heroes, I reached a point where I was like, oh, I need other people or I just kind of can't move on (laughs) because these puzzles are designed to be like almost impossible if you don't have someone with you so four swords adventures is a similar format but it's more feasible for a single player even though it's designed to be played with other people i don't know it's a neat game like i i really i appreciate the uh the like the ambition that they had that in mind for a zelda game even at that time in like 2003 or 4 or whenever that was and then it's also cool that it's just like each level is just a little chunk. It takes maybe like ten minutes, so it's like, oh, I can just do this real quick and cool. That's it. You know, put it, pick, you know, pick it up, put it down, come back later. It doesn't feel like a Zelda game in the sense that, you know, I'm playing Ocarina of Time and I'm on this grand quest. It just feels like nice little bite-sized challenges. Mm-hmm. It's cool. Who's your favorite Link? Purple. Purple Link. Yeah, of course. Okay. I think the thing, the reason I, I misunderstood the controller support is because I, I feel like the the concept for the game is confusing. Like I don't understand why mm-hmm. multiplayer you have to use Game Boy Advances. 
Yeah, I'm not. I'm not sure uh, what the deal with that is. I think Game Boy Advance. I don't even know if it's necessary to the multiplayer. I believe it is. I think it right? is. Yeah. But I think I think I think you can use a GBA with a link cable playing singularly, and you can use it to like access like little hidden caves or something, and it'll like switch screens. But you don't have to do that to play the game. I mean, it's a weird system, but. I don't remember exactly how it works, but yeah. I think that the the four swords thing represents one of the like some of the seedy Nintendo practices, especially at that time of trying to get people to buy like the peripheral crap. Yeah. Oh, of course. Buy, Although, buy oh, a yeah. reader so you can play. Fucking yeah. Ice climbers. Yeah. To- and, uh, using cards. I mean, totally. they still do that today. It's they got the amiibos, whatever. So it, it just kind of never ends with them. But I, I honestly love the concept of four swords. Like I, when I was a kid playing Time or uh, Link to the Past, I I talked all because I'm a twin. So it's like I'm trading off with my brother all the time when playing it, and we talked endlessly about how awesome it would be if there was a multiplayer component to it where you could solve things together, and they had a great opportunity to bring that with that game. I feel, and maybe that's my question to you, is do you think that the whole Game Boy Advance thing hampered that? Or do you think it would have been, like, do you think it might have been more successful if they just made a multiplayer Zelda game that you could use just control? I mean, it, it absolutely would have been more accessible if you had just been able to plug in a second GameCube controller and, and play. Like, that just sim- that simplifies the whole process. Well, but four controller ports. Right. So there's no reason, I mean... I get like wanting to sell link cables, but there's no reason that they could have just supported four GameCube controllers <laughs> for your four player GameCube controllers. No, you know, exactly. Game. Yeah, that, that's what I'm saying. Like it would have made it way more accessible yeah. just just to do that, but they clearly wanted it to be like a marketing tie in, which is whatever. They always do that. Doesn't Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles do the same thing? Yeah, Crystal Chronicles does. Also, um Pac Man Versus, which is also on Switch now too. Pac-Man Versus was the same thing where you um, use lead controllers and the people playing on the Game Boys uh, were ghosts, and then the person playing on the TV was Pac-Man. It was a cool concept, but yeah, Nintendo had a few of those games. Miyamoto actually uh, I was gonna say, let's, let's say thank you to Miyamoto right now for that. <laughs> thank you for Pac-Man Versus, Miyamoto. And I gotta say, for enforcing Final Fantasy Crystal Chronicles Game Boy Advance player. Go ahead, I played a little bit of Crystal Chronicles. That game was shit. <laughs> like i know it has a fan base um uh, but it is really bad because <laughs> the game is not good you're gonna play it with us spencer oh i'll play it with you <laughs> but uh it's just not a very good game i think i think the concept behind uh, four swords is way better and it's it's way better executed and i played a little bit of triforce heroes i played it online it, it has the maddening frustration that that kind of game would bring of just you might be playing with a toddler who has no idea yeah. what they're doing <laughs> and so i could totally see just trying to get through it in single player um but i think that's kind of the thing that always put me off of four swords was it's like i could play it by myself but i feel like that kind of defeats the whole purpose of the game and right so I, i'm always like, yeah it's it's eh. clearly designed to be played like with other people mm-hmm which is fine, and but you can you play do it single on your own. player. You control like all four links, and they're walking side by side. Is that what's happening? And then you right, gotta, like, yeah, it's like they, they move as a unit. They each can one. Control. They they move as a single unit, and you can control. You can switch between a few different like stances or like patterns that they'll that they'll stand in to accomplish different things. So if you need if you need four links to push like a really like a big boulder, then you put them in a straight line. Right, and, and then, then when you push, push they all push together. It's right. like, or if you need them all to like stand or if you need, on a, if you need to hit a bunch of switches that are like, if you get like a circle and then you, they're like on the edges of that circle, there are four switches that you need to hit. You can make them like stand in a diamond pattern and all swing their sword outward at the same time. So, how often did you find that system more intuitive than cumbersome, or vice versa? Well, it's it definitely takes some getting used to, just because you have to get used to like switching the stance when you need to. Because I I have a tendency to just the, there's one where they just like walk in a straight line and you're it's it's almost like playing link to the past and then you just have three like shadows following you so that's the one that feels most like i'm just playing a game so i kind of stick to that and then i'll find a, i'll get to a puzzle and i'm like why can't i oh i need to change the thing and then i'll switch it up and but yeah it it takes some getting used to but it's not like i don't know it's not too frustrating it's just a little bit unwieldy at first i think simply because you're not used to it 
Once you figure it out, it's it's no problem. Can I throw them like Pikmin? I think so. Oh, really? I think you can. Or there, yeah, there's some there's some method of like getting long distances. I don't remember. Do they hit things with their heads like Pikmin? They do not. <laughs> Unfortunately. Oh, it says a bit about like the story is decent in this game. Can you confirm? I I haven't completed the game, but. The the opening cutscene for the story, if I remember correctly, is really short. It's just a quick little like. What's the story? It's it's not Ganon. It's Vati. Van. Van Vanon. Yeah. No, it's Van. it's a it's Vati who's like a he's like a wind god or something, and he Van just Halen. he just like pops. Yeah, it's Eddie Van Halen, and he just pops <laughs> up and like. He, I don't I don't even remember if he kidnaps Zelda or if he steals something valuable, and then. Link walks up to the altar and he pulls the sword out and then the all all the other links shoot out. It's like the sword is magical. It's called the four sword. He pulls it and then it gives him three clones and he's like, "I'm gonna go save the world." And that's pretty much it. Like, it really it <laughs> it really felt like yeah. He pulls the drumsticks out of the set and then he plays the hot for teacher gym. No, uh, it really felt like uh, they were just like story doesn't matter. Let's just have you play some fun little chunks of Legend of Zelda and just have story there for the sake of you understanding what you're doing. No, it's not canon. Canon, canon. Everything's canon now. <laughs> it is but, in the timeline. Uh, yeah. So. Vati is in the Minish Cap, apparently. I yes. Know. Yeah, Vati's yep. from Minish Cap. Yeah, exactly. I don't know how closely those games are connected because I haven't beaten either one, but I would imagine it's pretty loose. That's strange, too, because Capcom developed Minish Cap, and I don't think they had anything to do with Fourth Wars Adventures. I have no clue. Well, they, uh, yeah, and in fact, in the Minish Cap, there is a function that. that it uses some of the stuff from Four Swords. It's kind uh, of fun. Mm. Uh, yeah, Minish Cap's cool. I haven't I haven't played too much of it yet, but so far I dig it. It's my favorite. I really? have it on my Wii U. So do I. Yeah, that's how I play it. Yeah, it's a cool game. A not cool console. Mine's Zelda theme, so it's cool. <laughs> but you like your Wii U. How else am I supposed to play Star Fox Zero? <laughs> You're supposed to not play Star Fox Zero. Play Star Fox 64. That's how you play it. I, that, it's basically Star Fox 64, but better because you have to use two screens. Right, yeah. <laughs> better Alex review. Double the screens, double the fun. Just but, that. <laughs> double the screens, just double the put fun. That little piece of audio <laughs> put up as a Star Fox Zero review. Okay. Alex reviews Star Fox Zero. Shit. What the fuck? I got an email. <laughs> and it, anything else about Four Swords? No, I'm trying to think. Like, it's pretty much it. It's very, it's a very simple little game. It, it feels very like, uh, I don't know, condensed. Maybe the right word. You know, when you watch a movie and you're like, oh, this just feels tight. Like it feels like the budget was low, and they they just made a really nice little like story that's its own little thing in a box and nothing else needs to touch it. That's what it feels like to play that game. It's it's cool. It's tight. It's tight. Thing in a box. It's cool. You got it. <laughs> it's a tight thing in a box that's cool. <laughs> put that on the box. Put that on the back of the case. We'll put it on our YouTube channel. Yeah. <laughs> Damon says it's a tight thing. It's, it's a tight well, thing in a box. They'll probably end cool. up clipping this for a review, so <laughs> we'll put it in the description. It's a tight thing in a box. It's cool. Yeah. Hey y'all, don't forget to subscribe to them button mappers.